Good morning. Welcome to worship at the Presbyterian Church of Wilmington. We are so glad you're here. We're glad that you're joining us in person in the sanctuary as well as online through, um, through Facebook. Welcome. Announcements. Um, in your bulletin, there are several. The, um, many people have asked about the food drive, if they can just donate a check. They could write a check for the food drive. Yes, you may do that. Make the check out to PCAL, to the Presbyterian Church of Wilmington, like you would normally. And then just put food drive on the memo line. And that way, then, the um, Sugar Tree Ministries can fill in the gaps with the places where they, they have holes in their um, food shelves. And, and along with we're doing our blessing of the backpack this morning, so that's going to be um, something wonderful for our kids. And as we're looking to the end of summer and the beginning of fall, choir resumes on September the 7th at 7. September 7th at 7, and anyone in 7th grade or older is invited. So you can be in 7th grade or you can be 70 plus. Anyone is invited to come to choir Wednesday evenings, 7 o'clock, starting on September 7th. Now, if you're not in 7th grade, if you're younger than that, our children's choir is going to start a week or two following adult choir. But we will be starting a children's choir. So that, watch the bulletin and watch the announcements for that. Thank you. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. I will lift mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth shall neither slumber nor sleep. Please join in singing the opening hymn 139, Come Thou Almighty King.
Please join me in the call to confession. We come before God, not as despised sinners, but as beloved children. With the confidence of children of God, let us humbly confess our sin. Eternal God, we know that we are your good creation, made in your image and called to reflect your goodness. In Jesus Christ, you redeemed our brokenness and brought us into right relationship with you. And yet, despite our best efforts, and sometimes due to our worst efforts, we have sinned. Our sin leaves us feeling alienated and distant from what we love. Forgive us, we pray. Bring us back to wholeness that we might find our rest in your love. In Jesus Christ we pray, amen. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning. How are you? Good. Some of you brought your backpacks, and that's good, but you don't have to have them. I just want you to come on up, Jack. I know. Jack's sporting his new football gear, so that's... So we've got Amelia. You're in preschool, right? And Alea, what grade are you in? In first grade. Now I'm trying to go in order, so I'll come back to you. I think next would be Austin and Lila. What grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth grade. When I first came here, they were in preschool. I'm just saying, time passes. So we've got preschool and first grade and fifth grade. Fifth grade, too, so three fifth graders. I'm going to seventh tomorrow morning. Seventh grade tomorrow. Are you both freshmen? Really? Freshmen. Freshmen in high, in, you mean in high school. Oh yes. my gosh. Okay, and then Jack, what year are you? A senior at Ohio State. So we have the whole gamut. We have just starting to almost finish our educational journey, but then there's so much more. Because you guys know, right? that you're lifelong learners. You know, I just finished a program 
right, in seminary, I'm not done learning, and I'm a lot, lot older than all of you. You'll never stop. There's so much to learn and so many exciting things to experience. But I want you to know wherever you are on your journey, whatever path you're on, wherever you are, you're not alone. You have your families and you have your friends. You have your church family always behind you and praying for you. But you have God with you and beside you. Always right there. Woohoo is right. Always. And it takes no more than, than a thought in your head or the whisper of a prayer to, to speak to God. Just like you might call your mom up and say, hey, I need some help with this. Or you might ask your, your friend, how do I solve this equation? Or I don't know what this word means. You ask the people around you for help. We can turn to God with a breath, a thought, and a prayer. And I want you to know today that as we embark on this new school year, you go with the prayer of me and your whole church family is behind you. So I made some, some backpack tags. All of them on the front say, blessed to be a blessing. Okay. But it's on the back that it gets a little different. It's, well, it says the same words, but there's two colors. And it says, kindness. Spread that around like glitter. How many times have we done craft projects and one person uses glitter, right? How many projects have glitter on them? Every bit of them, plus the carpet, the clothes, the hair. Glitter is one of those things that spreads when we don't even mean it to. But friends, kindness is just like that. You are blessed to be a blessing to other people. And kindness, spread it around. You don't really know where it's going to go. So you're going to get a choice of colors. Okay. What choice would you like? It's just top one. Okay. I don't, I don't care. I, I know. But I made him, I thought this through. I wanted to give people choices. Like that one? What about you? You like that one? How about you? And even if you don't have your backpack, you can take this home. You like that one? All right. Let's see here. I know this takes a minute. We're going to say a prayer in just a second. So friends, look at that. Do you see that? Blessed to be a blessing. I want you to remember that every day. And on the back, kindness. Spread it around like glitter. Spread it around like glitter. Can we pray, friends? Can we pray? Why not? Dear Lord, be with us. When we are in school, when we are at home, wherever we are, help us remember that you love us. And now, we get to love other people. Help us be kind and a friend to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go have Sunday school.
The Old Testament lesson is Genesis 18, 1 through 9. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O oh, Master God, come in our presence and stir our hearts. Speak through me that I might praise your name and express your power, and your people might be filled with the joy of serving thee. This I pray in thy name. Amen. You've all heard the television advertisement for insurance, the three Ps, price, price, and price. Well, for three hours, I'm going to preach on the three Gs, God, God, and God. So if you want to take a break and get a donut or something, you know, it's very strange, and yet it's very real, that a lot of times we read Scripture and we really don't get the depth of it and the meaning of it. Or we say the confession or the Lord's Prayer, and we have a tendency just to say the words. A couple of Sundays ago, I was a liturgist, and I read the same text that was read, uh, read today. And I went home, and in my quiet time, the Spirit spoke to me, and I, I started looking at it again, and man, my heart did beat. Because it told something that ha had not been told. Here we have Abraham, and we have God, and we have the sacred oak at Mamram. And the Lord was traveling with two companions, and he was going to Sodom and Gomorrah. And on his way, he stopped and he turned, and he then appeared to Abraham. Now, just think of that. The Lord, Yahweh, appeared to Abraham, a humble man, the creator of the universe, the separation of the oceans and the rising of the mountains and the creation of the birds of the air and the fish of the sea and the beasts of the land and man. This same God spoke to Moses. He spoke several times to others, but here he speaks to Abraham. And I was thinking, if I was sitting on my porch and God, the Lord, would appear to me, wow, you realize the power of that. If God would speak to us and come and we could see him, what a wonderful thing. And then we have Abraham, and Abraham was just a common herder, a common man living in his life day by day, caring for sheep. And he was at the entrance of his tent. Not in it. He wasn't tending sheep at that time. It was a noon hour. For in the Far East at the noon hour, many times they take two and three hours noon rest and eat. And he was there, not doing other things, just sitting. And it said that the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. Now the oaks of Mamre, that was a sacred tree. And Abraham had built an altar there to worship God. And as he sat at the entrance of the heat, his tent in the heat of the day, he looked up and saw three men. Now we don't know who those other two men are. There's an argument about who they are. But the Lord, God, Yahweh, was there. And he ran from the entrance of his tent to the Lord. And he bowed down. He ran. He knew that was the Lord. How do we know this? Because if we go back in the early history and the young life of Abraham, he came from the city of Ur of the Kalis, and his father, according to legend, built idols for all religions. And God spoke to him, 
and said, Get thee up and gird thy loins and go to a land which I will give thee, and you shall prosper, and your generation and your family shall multiply. And so he went into a land he did not know, but he followed God because God spoke. And then he came to the land of Cana up to Bethel and then traveled south and he became a little wealthy and then famine came over the land and he traveled to Egypt for somehow Egypt was always a rich land. And he stayed there a while, but before he went in, he told his wife, Sarah, now don't tell them that you are my wife. Because if you tell them you're my wife, they'll kill me and take you. And so they went to Egypt, and he was accepted by the Pharaoh, and things went pretty good, and he got wealthy. He went with Lot, his uh, brother's son, and he got wealthy. And the Lord didn't like that. And the Lord sent plagues upon the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh learned that Sarah was his wife. And so he called him in and he said, Come, Abraham, now I want you to go out of this land. Leave. Take Sarah. Take Lot. Leave this land. And so he left with all his wealth. And settled once again in Cana. And came to Mamre. And him and Lot, they raised their sheep and they multiplied and finally Abraham said, it's getting too crowded here, Lot. I will divide the land and if you go to the east, I will go to the west. And if you go to the west, I'll go to the east. And Lot saw Jordan and he saw the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and he said, I want to over there. I want to live in the city. So Abraham lived in his tent. And then we find that the master the Lord came to him and he sat in his tent and he saw the Lord. Now think on this thing. If he was in his tent doing things with Sarah or he was herding sheep, he would not have seen God. He would not have seen the Lord because the Lord was passing by. And you know, that's important for us to understand. We too <coughs> must set aside a lot of the things that we're doing and we need quiet time. We need to set and be still and know God. And if we aren't, then we will miss him since traveling by us. When he comes and sees us, we, we will not see him because we'll be too busy. Our minds will be too, too occupied with other things. So we need quiet time. We need to be still and we need to ponder and we need to read the word of God and we need to study it and try to get the meat of the word. And so what happened, of course, he runs and he bows down and he says, look, I want you to stay. If you respect me, stay a while. I'll give, you, I'll give water to wash your feet and I'll give you sustenance. And that was the uh, tradition of the day. When strangers would travel from afar, people would take them in and feed them. And in the old times, a lot of times in the caravans, when you traveled the caravans of Egypt to Egypt and to other lands, several caravans would go together. And at night, at the evening meal, then they would bring out a cup. And they would fill that cup half full, completely filled. And they would give it to the caravan that joined them. And if they filled it half full, those caravans must go their way the next day. If they feel it clear to the field, to the top, then they could travel with them clear to the destination. And God, speaking in the psalm, says, He fills our cup and it overflows. We can stay with Him forever and ever and ever. We can journey with Him to the end of our life and into the next. 
And so Abraham ran into Sarah and he said, he said make cakes. Grind the meal, make the cakes. And he ran to the field and got the best little lamb and brought it in and gave it to the servant to prepare. Do you realize how long that would take to cook all that? So Jesus was there a long time, or the Lord was there a long time. And he came out and he gave them water to wash their feet. He gave them food and he watched. And then they got up to go their way. And what happened? One of the men or beings that traveled with the Lord said, we're going down such and in a short time we'll return and Sarah will have a son. What? Sarah, as old as she is, Abraham, as old as he is? And she chuckled. And the man said, why are you laughing? Well, we're old. We cannot have children. Do you realize that God can do anything, he said? God can do anything in our life. If we, even if we are ancient, like Charlie, you know. when we are young. And so they traveled on and they went to Sodom and Gomorrah. And what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? These people were so ungodly, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham was a godly man. A godly man. He walked with God. From the very beginning in the city of Ur to the time where he saw the Lord and fed him. Which brings me to the second section, the commandment of God. You shall love the Lord with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul and with all your being. Now in the ancient world, the heart was the center of all emotion and drives, desires. The heart was the center of life. I saw the picture of, actually the actual window, the rose window of Notre Dame. And in the very center of that huge window is a, an image of God with a scepter in one hand and the, um, I forget what the other is, the power of earth on the other. And as long as that is in the center, that window is balanced. If that were to be broken out or destroyed, the window would collapse. And this reminded me of that. Because we, when we see God, and when we have God in the center of our life, and love him with all of our hearts, we will be in balance. Our life will be in balance. But you know, a lot of people, they crowd God out. They had the God of wealth. I want to make money. And if I make money, I will be happy. I will be blessed. I will be fulfilled. And so what happens? They work. They work more and more, long hours. And eventually their family suffers, their society suffers, their friends suffer. They get wrong attitudes and they fail. There are those who want power. And so they get so obsessed with power that that power crowds out God, and that power ruins them. And why do I say this is, if we have God in the center of our window, in our life, in our heart, everything around, our wealth and our power and our recognition, and the things that we have, God will take care of us. But any time, we look at cell phones. Some people, they're slaves to cell phones. They have to have a cell phone everywhere at the dinner table. And what happens? You have it at the dinner table, and then you don't have conversation with your family. You're on the phone. You're isolated. You have problems. And that becomes their God. That crowds out God. And here again, we come back to the idea we must have God in the center of our life. We must have quiet time. And then we think of our heart, the center of all our drives, 
Jesus says, out of the heart come the issues of life. So why don't those issues come from God, which is in our heart? Later on in history, the Greeks came around and they said, the mind is the center of the being. Reason, learn, study, debate, and you survive. That is what Jesus said. But they did. And what has happened since then, we have humanism, the idea that man, we don't need God. We can solve all our problems. And so as a result, all of these things have crowded out that center, that God in the center. And then with all your mind and with all your strength, in other words, with your body, look at how many people are so vain they dress up the body and they color their hair and they whoop, sorry, change, change everything on their body. God made a body beautiful. And yet some individuals are so obsessed with how they look. And Jesus said no. And the first commandment said no. You love God with all your heart. And he made you what you are. So you're beautiful, you're what he wants. And why should we do this? Some individuals ask me, why should I become a, a child of God? Why should I do all of this sort of thing? Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way. If we follow the teachings of Christ, our life will be balanced and we will be made complete and we will be fulfilled. He knows the right way. Men don't know the right way. Just think of our world the way it is today. Wars and rumors of war and hate and greed and selfishness and self-centeredness. Why? Because man thought he had the answer. No, Jesus has the answer. He is the truth. We hear on television, news and so forth, and we hear these groups of people saying, oh, that's not truth, that's fabricated, and the Democrats are doing this, and the Democrats are doing that, and uh, oh, uh, you know, they're always against Trump and all that. But Jesus is the truth. The truth. And if we read his book and study his way, we will learn the truth about man, about individuals, about God. I am the life, he says. In me, you will have greatness in yourself. You will have peace in yourself. You will start to understand why we go through things. Because you have followed Jesus. You follow God, and you put him in the center of your life. Amen. Let us pray. Oh, Master God, speak to us now that we would have you in the center of our life, that we take time to be quiet, to put aside the things of life and the busyness of the day to walk with thee to look for thee as you come to speak to us. Guide us now, we pray in thy name. Amen. Now let us stand and let us affirm our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and crucified and died. But he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into the heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father, and will come again unto the dead the world. Dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life 
everlasting. You may, be, you may be seated. The offering is in the back, taken in the back. Let me thank you for your gifts. We even hope more to thank you for the giving of your life to the service of God. Let's sing congregational response. Our world is a sad world, it is a world that is hurting, people are starving and people are leaving the country, going into lands where they don't speak the language. We have nuclear possibility of war, we have all kinds of heat related problems, fires and drought, we have floods, it seems that the world is in a very, very bad place. We have people in our congregation that are suffering. They have hurt, they have pain. They go to doctors and doctor tells them we must do this, this, and this. Our hearts go out to them. We only hope that God can reach them and touch them and bring about peace and harmony once again. Let us pray our closing prayer, after which we'll say the Lord's Prayer, have silent prayer to begin with. Let us pray. Master God, come our way. Help us to humble ourselves and to sit quietly to receive you. Lord, we pray for this world, for these wars that are going on and killing people and destroying property. We pray, Lord, that some way you and us together might end this war in these famines, in these droughts and these fires. Lord, give us wisdom. We pray for the healing power of governments, that they might turn to thee and realize there is a better way. Then, O oh Lord, there are the humanity that suffers. Be with those who are starving and those who have no crops to yield. Bless them and help them, Lord, in some way that they may be able to feed their people. And Lord, we pray for our congregation here, that you'd be with each one, that you lift each one up to thee, that you fill them and give them peace, give them healing in their body. This we ask in the name of God, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is power, power and glory forever. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn. Two hundred and sixty.